Hello friends, we're continuing our exploration of coyote myths this week. This time it is the story of how coyote and eagle visited the land of the dead. This myth comes to us from the Yakima tribe, uh, spelt Y-A-K-I-M-A, -A of North America. We're going to get right into it. Long ago, when the land was first created, people and animals lived amongst each other, for animals were considered people too. We used to sing and dance and perform sacred rites together. Amongst all the animals, Coyote was most interested in humans. But much to his distress, many of his friends amongst the humans began to die. Some of old age, others illness, some from injury and battle. Coyote missed his friends, and thought and pondered, for he heard much crying and mourning amongst his friends of the humans. Wanting to help his friends, he considered ways that he might bring the dead back to life. As the situation grew worse, Coyote's sister died, and his good friend the eagle, eagle's wife, died. In an attempt to comfort his friend the eagle, Coyote likened those who had died to the leaves that fall from the trees. Each winter they fall brown and fall to the ground, but in the spring they return, and he reassured Eagle that the spirits of men and beast are the same. But Eagle despaired because he did not think he could wait that long to see the visage of his dear wife. So with determined hearts, Coyote and Eagle sought out the land of the dead. Eagle soared overhead while Coyote trotted below, and while they put a brave face of it, both of them were uncomfortable. Soon they came upon a great body of water, which disconcerted them. But just in the distance, they could see a great number of structures. Upon closer examination, they were lodges of the people of men. Let's get a boat, suggested Coyote. Then we can cross the waters. But there was no lumber on the side of the water that Coyote and Eagle found themselves on. Coyote shouted and shouted, but none would answer. Eagle, with his better vision, saw no one on the other side. There must be no one left, he said. No, Coyote said. They're just sleeping. Eagle, don't you know? The dead sleep during the day and work at night. We'll just have to wait until nightfall. After sunset, Coyote began to sing his power song, and Eagle began to pray. Their voices lifted across the water, and soon four men exited the lodges from across the water, gathered up a canoe and paddles, and in rhythm to the singing and the praying, crossed the water, almost seeming to fly rather than paddle. Soon the boat arrived. Coyote and Eagle entered the canoe, continued their singing and their praying, and they were borne across the waters. Just as they were about to get out of the boat, one of the spirits warned them, Do not look into the houses. Do not look around. Close your eyes with great respect, for this is a sacred place. Coyote challenged the ghost. We have traveled far, and we are hungry. Is it not the responsibility of the host to feed their guests? Hearing this, the spirits relented and allowed Eagle and Coyote to join them in one of the lodges. This lodge was large, with a high ceiling, a roaring fire at its center. There were many who danced and sang to the beat of the drums. An old woman approached them with food, fruit, and oil. Soon, Eagle and Coyote were satisfied. Eagle looked around with great interest. The lodge was full of a great many spirits, dressed in their finest. The moon shone through the door and through the smoke hole. Near it stood Frog, who long ago had jumped to the moon and was now its protector. Ensuring that its light shone on all, Coyote had a plan. A mischievous, troublesome plan. He waited until the dancing reached its peak and then snatched the moon from Frog's grasp, swallowing it whole, thus creating darkness. Then Eagle caught the ghosts one by one and shoved them in a large basket. He closed the lid tight that they might not escape. Then Coyote and Eagle fled back to the canoe. Along the way, they heard noises from within the basket. See, Coyote rejoiced. They are coming back to life. 
Then they heard someone say, We are being crushed. Let us out. And the basket was growing heavier as more and more people returned to life. Coyote finally decided to let them loose and removed the lid. But Eagle protested, No, don't do that. Not yet. But it was too late. Coyote had dropped the basket and released the lid. All of the spirits poured out as a great wind, for they had not come back to life after all, and they streamed back into the land of the dead. Eagle was very upset and screamed at Coyote for quite some time, but remembered, Coyote, didn't you say it is still yet autumn? And though they fall from the trees, they shall return in spring. Perhaps I can wait for spring after all. But Coyote was fed up with Eagle, and decreed, No, no more. I shall not help you. I am tired of all this. Let the deceased stay in the land of the dead forever. So Coyote made a law that all those who died, their spirits would go to the land of the dead and remain there for all time. If he had left the lid on the basket and carried it across the waters, perhaps we would return to life each spring, as do the leaves of trees. But alas, it is not so. Thank you for indulging me as I continue down this trend of coyote-themed stories. There are lots of them to enjoy. I hope you drive as much enjoyment from them as I do. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye!